Hi, this is Danny Doyle. Uh, welcome back to chapter 17 of my Fire Emblem Path of Radiance 0% growths run. Um, I'm joined once again by Jacob, and this is a very, very long chapter. Jacob, you've been talking sugar about this chapter, uh, both on and off mic, for a while now. Um, so I'll let you... I'm, I'm going to start the chapter, because the first... The beginning portion of it is kind of boring. It's just a route map. Um... And I'll let you talk a little bit about what you like about this chapter, what makes it special, or whatever. So um, what I really love about this chapter is it's really experimental in what it does. It tries to take a really large chapter and split it up into four separate battles with four separate goals. Think of it like a genealogy map, where you have multiple places you need to go and multiple objectives to complete. And you can even see the whole map on just this screen, right? You can scroll around and see the other places you're about to go on the map, right? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I'm pretty sure. I think so. Yeah, you can yeah, scroll over here. Yeah, because this is this is where Oliver is. Four. We're chasing um. You might remember that armor knight Oliver from last chapter. We're chasing him around the forest now because he's got high movement. Because we uh, like a like a pro player, he put his boots on his armor knight. So think of this like a genealogy map, but it's split with save points in between each one. And I think it's such a neat idea that you get to do these multiple chapters all in a row. And in between each part of the chapters, you don't get to you don't get to change your deployment order between each one. You don't get to say, oh, I don't want to field you anymore. But instead, you pick two units each part that you want to reinforce that'll join the next part of the chapter with you. You also aren't allowed to reposition the people you already have deployed, which is why um, Marsha is actually deployed in this map, despite the fact that she's not incredibly useful for a route map. Um, and that's because Marsha needs to be in deployment slot number two for something in part four, that a very special role she's going to have. Um, and unfortunately, I can't, like, reposition her to be in a different deployment slot. So she's got to stick around basically as dead weight the whole time. And I think what makes this stand out from a genealogy map is in FE4, you just have, you got to go to the castle, seize it. Go to the castle, seize it. In this, you have, this is a route map first. Then there's a seize map, or it's a escape map or arrive technically then there's a defend map and then there's a kill boss so each one has its own separate obje objective to take care of but I, I think it's a really cool idea for a chapter and i would love to see it try to be done again maybe a little bit differently maybe allow you to reposition your people in between each part It kind of feels like uh, they inserted an early game map into the mid game, um, or a series of early game maps where traditionally in early Fire Emblem, like you have a limited roster, so they're stuck in specific deployment slots or whatnot. Um, I'm thinking like yeah. Thracia does some interesting stuff with this in the Manster Escape too. Um, and it almost feels like that, I mean halfway, because you do get to choose what units to use. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of feels, it kind of feels like that. Um, also, and whenever someone, if anyone tries to play this map, please turn your screen brightness all the way up or else you are not going to tell what the swamp tiles are from the plains tiles. <laughs> I mean, or you could turn the screen brightness all the way down cause we're in a spooky forest. Um, that's right. And actually fittingly, uh, this map, because this has like the four part split, this is going to be the majority of my October uploads. Um, so we're in the spooky forest for spooky Halloween. Ooh. Left taking more damage than I would like. <laughs> I think we're finally reaching that point where your units are just not stacking up to what you're going up against. Well, and I Other just than... realized I didn't deploy a healer for part one. Ooh. Which might be a reset. Um, 
I'm used to Leth just being able to, like, tank everything. <laughs> yeah. But that I'm... is not the case anymore. I think the next chapter, the one with the wall, I think that's going to be the first real struggle map where we're going, oh, we just can't do the thing we want to because the people we have just can't do the thing we want. Of course, we'll still have units like Stefan, Moaro, Tanith, but even Titania, look how she's doing. Well, and I was kind of planning around this. Like I said, um, in... I forget when I mentioned it. It might have been in the desert chapter. Um where I'm planning around specific choke points as opposed to planning the playthrough as a whole. And Chapter 17 is a big one where, yes, I have Stefan and Devdon and Moraram and Tormod that I just got. Um, but... Okay, you can't reach... As long as I can kill this archer, uh, I can protect Leth from everyone this turn. I also uh, think it's great that we're sincerely seeing use of Devdon and not just memeing around saying, hey, look, it's the guy who is or looks like Donved, right? Yeah, I, I'm surprised that you're restrained that you haven't made a single mecha joke, despite the fact that that is not mecha. Um, mecha's only in Radiant Dawn. Yeah, he's a different person. This one, this guy worked at Oliver's Palace. The other guy's a merchant, so they're completely different people. And they have different starting inventory, so that means they're different. I should have given Marsha a better lance. I just gave her the slim lance because I didn't expect her to be doing anything. Um, well, let's see you know, if I, I can like realize, box her in at least. I also just realized how awful your Ike is going to be. Oh yeah, he gets one rounded by everything. But even in part three, he's going to be so hopelessly gimped. <laughs> I I don't think that will actually change anything. Normally, he's like useless, or not useless, but he gets a lot more useless in part three and part four because he is forced to rescue Leanne, who's a plot character, um, and he can't give her to anyone. But like that just lowers his speed, and he's getting doubled by everything anyway, and lowers his skill, and like... I mean, sure, he'll miss more often, but if he's getting in combat, you've made a mistake anyway. At least it's not Thracia rescuing, where it has all of your stats except for HP luck. And potentially movement. <laughs> oh, yeah, if they weigh over half your build. Which, uh, I don't know what Ike's weight is. I know he can't rescue Riss, though, so, like, Leanne might be I enough that it would cut around... the move in half. I think he has around... Build... Because I want to say, I know he and Riss are able to shove each other, and I think they have around nine-ish weight. Yeah, they're close enough that they can both shove each other, uh, but neither can rescue the other one. Yes. Because the rescue formula is different in this game. It took me an embarrassing amount of time to figure out the rescue formula in this game. Because it's, you can shove people that are up to two weight more than you, and you rescue people that are at least two weight less than you. It's not like GBA, where you just rescue someone who is lighter than you. Yeah, I don't know, um... I feel like, I guess maybe that's more realistic? Um... I don't know if I like that better, necessarily. Okay, so she'll survive that as long as I can, like... Hmm. I like the shoving decision because it, it just gives you more shoving options. It means that if two people are the same weight or one or two weight apart from each other, they can still shove each other. For example, again, I can risk. I want to say Riss has... One of the two of them has one or two weight more than the other. But since they're both in that threshold, they can still shove each other. Actually, they should be only one weight away, or else one could rescue the other. Um, but Mount well, I didn't deploy Riss because I'm not good at planning and didn't deploy any healers for a combat-heavy chapter. Oh, we'll be fine. I decided that useless smite bot was probably better for the combat chapter. <laughs> Instead of having him show up as a reinforcement in the movement chapter. Which, next chapter is more about movement than it is about fighting. I do um, have a couple of side objectives I want to do. Okay. Uh, can you... 
Just the mages. The mages don't reach there. Do you? You do. Okay, Killer Lance. Uh. Oh, but he can't get into the bush anyway. Um. Can Smitebot help? Ah, Smitebot can't reach! Oh, well. How do you? You don't. Okay. Doesn't the boss have a killer land? Uh, well, he's not necessarily the boss. He's just, like, a promoted enemy. I guess technically the boss. I, I, I don't know if you'd count him as, like, a generic with no portrait being the boss. But, yes, yeah, he I, does. I always... He drops it, though. So then I will have the killer lands. I always kind of considered him the boss, considering he's standing at the opposite end of the map, surrounded by scrubs, and holding a slightly better weapon than everyone. I think that kind of, I think that constitutes as at least the mini boss. I can't lure just the mages. I would love to. Um... He's more of a mini boss than that random brigand in Chapter Five of Sacred Stone. What random brigand? Uh, I'm not as familiar with GBA emblem as you are. So, I don't know what their plans with this guy was, but there's this brigand in the chapter with Joshua. I'm pretty sure that's chapter 5. Oh, yeah. I He yeah. shows up. Um, he's got, like, a name and a portrait and everything, and he's just like, I want to destroy houses. And Yeah, I don't even think it. he has a name. I think he's just brigand, and he has, he has personal bases. He has higher stats than the other brigands of his level, and I have no idea who he is or why he's there. My only guess is that he was going to be some kind of character at some point, but they just scrapped it. Wow, there, there's a lot more reinforcements in this map than I remember. Uh, try playing it on Maniac Mode. Uh, this map was ridiculous on Maniac Mode. You uh, also might not the remember invite, the they... reinforcements because um, they show up. Look, what turn is this? Turn four. I guess it's not that four. late. Uh, okay. I think I on the left, but I think those are the last things I see because I just saw my pal on the stand back to Uh, can you try adjusting your mic? I couldn't hear anything that you just said. Oh, yeah. Is that any better? Yes. What were okay. you saying? Uh, I don't usually see past a certain turn because I just give all my paladins hand axes and you just kill everything i think this is one of the few chapters where that strategy doesn't just default work because there's so much terrain uh, especially in like part two um that i mean flyers with hand axes and i guess javelins Ooh, longsword yeah longsword um uh oh man nah, it's not a big deal let me just send uh stefan up here i'm actually curious how much damage would that longsword do it was like 11 or something but it's more damage. that, like, there's no reason to, um, yeah, it's 11 damage. There's no reason to expose oh, no. Kieran to, like, that All plus that. the Killer Lance plus, like, he's got garbage res, and that's 29 crit. Like, I know it's a garbage hit chance, but I think I'd rather just have Stefan dealing with all that. Um, let's send Kieran down here to, uh, fuck up these scrubs. Oh, oh. Can this guy reach? He can. Okay. Um... I guess I can put a bow on him. Like, he won't counter the, uh, Merc. Yeah. Uh, Leth can fuck off over here, because her gauge is low and her health is low. Like, I don't think she's going to be doing much. I think my least favorite part about some route maps is whenever the enemies, like, reinforce from all over the place. Whenever there's some reinforcements down here, there's some over on the left, some over on the right. Yeah, that can be annoying. Because you kind of have to spread all of your units out. And you have to say, okay, now I have to send you over here to go deal with these guys. Oh, no, now I got to go deal with these guys. There was, there was a chapter I played recently where I, where I thought that. Where I was like, oh, why do these guys keep reinforcing from all over the map? I know you're currently playing FE4. Or was it something in Radiant Dawn? Oh, it was Radiant Dawn. It was part three, two, the Fog of War map with uh, where you're inside the town and you have to route the map. Is that is that three oh, one or yeah. three two? Uh, I think that's three one technically because you get three P and then three one. Um, that map is annoying uh, because you'll yeah, that, that map was 
<laughs> that was so frustrating. <laughs> You'll run into just like randomly. Uh, you can. You know what? Because uh, I want to take some pressure off Devdon. Only one person can attack you up here. You can lure them with like the threat of. Or like. Being a, a target who can't counterattack. And then. Uh, can this guy. Plus, that'll help fill his gauge a bit. Uh, yeah, Leth can just chill here. We'll build their support. <laughs> Even though I don't think. Uh, do they have. I think they do I support. Don't... Yeah, they do. I think maybe they do. I don't, rem I don't remember all of the supports. Um, I can tell you the ones I'm using. Titania and Ike have a B support. Kieran and Marsha have a C support. Um, and. Which is why I, like, flew Marsha up to where Kieran was a couple of turns ago to give. A little bit of extra. I think it's attack, because uh, Kieran's fire, right? And she's wind Kieran, or something. I think, we found, I think we found out Kieran's not fire. I think he's wind of all things. And then Jill and Leth have a support. Um, they're at B right now. I don't know if I'm gonna take them to A or not because. Oh fuck! Oh no! Oh. Um. Well, <laughs> I guess this gives me an excuse to deploy a healer. Um. I'd rather be injured myself than do harm to someone else. That is one of the saddest death quotes I've ever read. I've got a story about sad death quotes um, from Awakening of all games. Uh, I'll tell that when we come back, though. I'm, uh, I'm just going to quickly reset and do my preps better. <laughs> All right, we're back. Uh, it's only turn three, but I went ahead and I deployed Tormod so that I would actually have access to a staff. Um, and he made it up to D stabs with like his first or second heal, um, which is nice. Uh, because the sooner I get him to physic, the more useful he'll be. Um, he has like one more magic than Riss, I think. Yeah, one more magic than Riss, um, thanks to his one magic promotion. Yeah, gotta keep those sages balanced. I mean, if you wanted to balance him, you wouldn't give him two extra move for no fucking reason. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this is unacceptable! Um, I, I will leave you here. I'll be right back. God fucking damn it. Okay, we're back again. Um, hopefully no more random thunder crits so that I can tell my super sad death quote story. I mean, I, I thought it was funny more than sad. Um, you know, the heavy spear, put you up here uh, as this enemy phase plays out. So I was playing Awakening, which like, yes, always a mistake. Um, and I had just gotten the S support between uh, Na, Naoi's son, or daughter, and um, Brady, who is Maribel's son, I think. Like, the, the terrible healer child. Um, I've never gotten Brady before, so I can't tell you. <laughs> this is the only time I used him. I'm just, like, trying to fill up the support log. So I got their S support, and one of the last things that Na said was, like, I'm too young to be a widow! So then fucking turn one of the next chapter brady just got one shot by a gale force falcon knight <laughs> or a dark flyer <laughs> or whatever the fuck they're called in awakening and i was just like i could not stop laughing because i was like well <laughs> i guess you're not too young anymore good job brady oh don't leave me hanging like this how much crit chance did that the Thunder Mage have on... Was it Titania? It was Titania. It was Titania. Kill, right? 15 crit. So uh, what's Titania's crit, crit avoid? Uh, is it just luck? So it would have been 4%? luck. He would have had a 4% crit. 4% crit. Is that, that's the second <laughs> time a fucking Thunder Mage has crit uh, one of my calves, right? Like Os That's how Oscar died the first time he died. Um, <laughs> yep. Devdon will be fine. No, he will not. <laughs> <laughs> I won't fall for your trickery. Um, Titania like probably men. will be, though. If, mm, eh, maybe. You think maybe you'd want to trade the Night Ward onto someone? 
Uh, I've got other on Kieran, so yeah, I could give it to Titania, and I just have to I mean, remember to equip it's it. It's two defense, but it's still something. Two defense against five enemies. I have to remember to equip it because items in this game don't auto equip, which is like kind of annoying. Um, well, it would I, be kinda... it would be less annoying if weapons didn't auto equip because. There's sometimes when you want to not have a weapon equipped, it's very rare that you want to not have an item equipped unless it's like, uh... I do want to heal her first. That'll also help chances of survivability. Um, unless it's like the demiband, like, and you're doing weird demiband strats. Um, we get like equip and unequip it for yeah. reasons. Um, Is killing a guy still alive, I'm guessing? I would like him not to be, but I think he is. Yeah, that's that one. Uh, and I don't know that I can necessarily leave left down here. Are uh, you better off just pulling back? So you can use Kieran and Warum to help? And potentially Jill. I mean, you're going to add some turns, but... I mean, you're going to add some turns is kind of how 0%... Path of Radiance works. Holy shit. Uh, I mean, I guess that's Weapon Triangle disadvantage for you. Maybe I'll... Okay, maybe I'll shove Stefan down here, because at least he doesn't have, like, Weapon Triangle against those guys. Um, I think Path of Radiance has one of my... Here... Oh, I sorry, think Path of Radiance has one of my favorite instances of the Weapon Triangle. It's plus one damage, uh, damage taken, and, like, uh, what it, plus one minus one damage dealt and taken and ten hit and avoid and I think that's How much I think that's does he have on the, one of the best ways they've done the weapon ooh that's a little shaky what if you give her the iron land uh, I less. have the wing spear I did not mean to I double tapped by accident I was trying to check damage was... instead of uh ah uh, well I, I committed was... to it now <laughs> fuck I was wondering. <laughs> rescue oh no i can i can't rescue her she's on a horse oh no i meant rescue i i can move oh i can still move okay hmm. how much does Moarum do again i think he leaves him at really low hp move over here we're just trying I to advance to uh again this is where oliver is like we know where he is i'm just Run an Ike over Just through the woods. Just take the forest. <laughs> Let's cut him off. Oh. Uh, you were saying, what is the weapon triangle in this? Because I'm actually not too familiar with it, weapon triangle as far differences as I know, in different games. It, it's the same one as Binding Blade, I believe, where it's one damage dealt one uh minus one damage taken and then 10 hit in the void god damn it Ooh. oh no don't you're gonna suffer from i mean i guess that one could reach her anyway but just clearing the path for multiple oh i don't know why they're spreading their damage so thin i don't think that guy could reach because of those swamp tiles uh you're probably right and then that guy goes for jill and don't please double. don't get doubled please don't get double there we go okay, there we go He's holding an iron blade. He might be getting weighed down by quite a bit. Is that the iron blade guy? I'm assuming the one it who critter was the killing edge guy. Oh, yeah. I would assume the killing edge guy crit. I mean, we've seen guys without killer weapons crit before, so it could have been the iron blade guy. We've seen guys with thunder tomes crit before, is I believe what you mean. <gasps> oh. oh, yeah. And this is one of the games where you can actually die to poison, unlike uh, in DS Emblem. Like, you... I think DS Emblem, at most, anything outside of combat can only take you to one. Because, like, poison, yeah. poison Strike, which is not the same as Poison. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> Ike! Contributing! Yeah, uh, all, all, all those map damage stuff. Even Ballista can't kill you in 3DS Emblem. Really? Like Ballista fire. can't kill you in 3DS Emblem? Now, they can hit multiple enemies. You can hit up to five enemies in a plus shape, but you can't kill with it, I believe. It'll just leave you at 1 HP. Hmm. Which I'm completely fine with. It's better than getting your units picked off from far away and having them get killed by 
Ballista. I don't remember if it's effective on flyers, though. Let's, uh, let's take care of that. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Torment did D again. It was just the first. Uh, it was the first heal that took him up to D again. Well, he can't use restore. He needs C to get restore anyway. Um, oh, looks like Jill's gonna have to stay poisoned then. I mean, that's not that bad. I'm trying to grind him up to C um, because, like I did with Mist. Um, Restore is just a good bench. Restore and Physic are two good benchmarks for healers to get to. For Mist, it was because Restore is good for uh, without a king. Let's see. Can you? You can walk through there. I'll um, be really curious how you're keeping her alive in that chapter. I guess you can choke enemies off in that map because of all the bridges, but I think there's a couple siege tomes in it. It's cute that you think I care about keeping her alive for anything after that chapter. <laughs> Oh god. Uh, this is a playthrough where there's going to be sacrifices. Um, some planned, some, like Oscar, just sort of unfortunate, I don't want to reset situations. But then how are you going to kill the Black Knight? Listen, I've killed the Black Knight in Maniac Mode. I don't feel any sort of, like, fake gamer pride <laughs> thing that I need for not killing the Black Knight in 0%. Your Black Knight quota has been fulfilled. How does Ike do against the fighter? Marsha doesn't die, and there's no crit chance. Let's just lure Next him up. over here. How much um, attack speed does he have? Uh, I don't know, but he doesn't double her. Like, I just checked the window. Um, speed of 10, weight of 11, strength of 14. So 10 attack speed. Um, Ike doesn't get doubled. He probably <laughs> gets one, one shot, though. Away from getting doubled. Oh, he probably get. I didn't check, like... He probably gets one shot or, like, reduced to one health so he automatically dies from poison or something stupid. In fact, let's check it out. Let's let's see what happens. Oh, God, there's more enemies. The enemy. The enemy. You can't say that line. You didn't play Heroes. I will never play Heroes. Like, I, I don't like gacha games. Um... Or, like, gambling simulators, or whatever the fuck we call them nowadays. I don't like the games that are, like, predatory, like, eat eat whales money. Um, which, like, if you do, I'm not, I don't, I'm not so opposed to them that I'm like, oh, by playing this thing that you enjoy, nice! Uh, nice by playing this thing that you enjoy, you, like, don't, I don't think that it's immoral to play them, which I've heard some people make that stance, and I'm just like, ah. <sighs> You're not the one who's... Di like, sure, you're supporting their bad decisions, but, like... No ethical consumption under capitalism, blah, blah, blah. I don't think... I don't think you should hold, like, people who find heroes fun account... Oh, maybe I can get a kill for Ike. This could be fun. Hopefully. I don't think you should hold, hold the people who find heroes fun accountable for the fact that, uh... Is it IS that makes heroes, or is it a different company? I never know with mobile I'm games. Sure it's still IS. Because I know some, like, the Mario Kart one isn't made by, um, I mean, it's probably by Nintendo, but not by whatever branch makes Mario. Nice movement pattern. <gasps> oh, hell Let's yeah! Go. Kill for Ike! There we go. You can't say he's useless. Chapter 17, base level Ike contributing. <laughs> Path of Radiance Come on, enemies Ike. Strength are and terrible. Speed. Strength and speed. <laughs> oh, this unit. Maybe you should have given him the speed wing so he could start doubling some fighters with three more pairs of them. No, thank you. Um, uh, this is the fire guy. Okay, so we'll do... You know what? Uh, can either of you reach, like, can I lure you? You, I can. Wonderful. Uh, attack my tiger, please. I don't even want to use a vulnerable on him because, like, what is he, 28 HP right now or something absurd? Really good. I mean, I would say it gives him gives Tormod more opportunity to heal, but Tormod has so much like so many healing targets plus all the poisoned people, not gonna run out. It's just a matter of like I had to buy vulneries for this map. Um Oh wow. Yeah, I'm trying to conserve uses. Well, and normally I don't really like use vulneries because 
I've usually got like Soren and Tormod and possibly either Riss or Mist. Uh, oh yeah. In my main squad, like. I'm trying to think of like a single time that I've bought Vulneraries in a Fire Emblem game. I can think of a time. Um, do you remember the first? Uh, I think this is actually how we started talking to each other. Was like. The draft of FE6 that Modi was oh, holding. Oh, yeah. Um, I, my, so, if anyone's familiar with FE6, um, my first healer joined in Chapter 12. It was, uh, is it Ray? Is the Dark Mage? Ray was the one that you recruit. What was the one you yeah. drafted? So I drafted Ray as my first magic user, which means he was also my first healer. So for all of the early game, I was just like, stealing everything i could because i had a stolfo um so i was i spent most of the western isles just like stealing antitoxins to sell for vulnerary money <laughs> because enemies Steal in fe6 are just medicine. like they're very high quality okay how much you want to bet that the thunder mage is going to crit stefan i want to see him go up again against Jill. Uh, well, not granting that wish. I will have this guy die to my tiger. Um. Fuck it, let's live. Oh, I can't live dangerously. Oh, I'm man. sorry. I was going to put him in range. I was. My oh, we don't have a smite guy. Not gonna do her. She had a chance already. Um, and we'll send you up here just in case. I don't remember the exact reinforcements for this chapter. Um, I've heard Falco Knights are good against mages. Fuck you. <laughs> it's okay. Sure You'll have your just desserts for those sorts of jokes soon enough. Um, Remind me, you love Chapter 17, right? And you love Marsha? Oh, yes, I do. Okay, that's good to keep in mind. It's a little bit of uh, what we I'm call scared. foreshadowing in the biz. I'm scared. What if you hit her? There, <laughs> As I mentioned, Marsha is only deployed in this chapter because she has to be in slot number two for uh, part four. For part four that's what you're still concerned about yeah no i uh I, because the deployment slots are locked um she has to be in slot number two and because initially i thought she was in a particular spot for part two nope uh jill's in a particular spot for part two and when i had mordecai he was in a particular spot for part four but um i wanted tormod instead of mordecai so, uh, well, I'll just sort of improvise. I'm sure there's plenty of other places that Mordecai can go um, to be useful. But uh, that was 17-1, and you'll notice that when I save my game, instead of going to 18, it just says, like, stage 2. Which, when that happened to me on my first playthrough, my mind was fucking blown. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's it for now. Um, we've been recording long enough. Uh... See you next time. Bye-bye.